wanted to do a tutorial on two of my favorite brushes, which are the Winsor & Newton Series 7 and the Princeton Heritage Series. Both of these brushes are similar, as they are both round threes, but you can kind of tell the difference already with how thick the Winsor & Newton Series 7 is compared to the Heritage Series. I was actually shocked when I first started doing this comparison as how much water is retained with the Windsor and Newton compared to the Princeton. I got pretty far with just one initial load of water and pigment. I wanted to go back and get one more load of water on there just to see how far I can actually stretch this. Now let's see how the Princeton Heritage holds up against the Windsor and Newton. It has a pretty good snap. At first, I was actually really impressed with the amount of pigment that the synthetic brush picked up. As I was going across the page, I did notice that it didn't retain as much water as the natural brush. I found myself having to go back and forth a few different times just to get as much water, just to get the length that I got out of the couple washes from the natural brush. So as you can tell, the synthetic just doesn't hold or retain as much water as the natural brush. Both brushes are still my favorite, and I find that they both have unique abilities. And though the Windsor & Newton retains more water, I do find that the Princeton Heritage seems to be a little bit more detailed. To show these abilities and characteristics of each brush, I decided to do a couple different loose florals. I started out with the Windsor & Newton Series 7, and then you can see the large brush strokes that you can get out of just this round three. I think this brush is really great to do leaves. Also, some of the petals for a floral, it's really nice. You can get pretty big brush strokes out of just this round three that you can't out of some of the other round threes that I've tried, like the Princeton. To find out more about the Sable brush, I decided to check out dickblick.com to just find out a little bit more about this brush that maybe I didn't know. And they said that the Kalinsky Sable is not really from a Sable at all, but it comes from the tail of a species of a mink that is a member of the weasel family found in Siberia and northeastern China. It is generally conceded to be the best material for oil and watercolor brushes due to its strength, its spring, and ability to retain its shape, or its snap. It holds a very fine point, or edge, and is considered to be a professional grade of hair. And if it's properly cared for, the Kalinsky will last for many years. I'd say the only drawback on this fantastic brush is actually the price. Because it's real and it's natural, they're quite expensive. Time to compare the Princeton Heritage Series Synthetic Sable brush. So far it has an amazing snap, and I really love that about this brush. It actually has really good fine detail lines that I use for many of my projects. Although it is a round three and it's not getting the same brush stroke that the Windsor & Newton Series 7 had. It's a little bit smaller, but that's okay. I do find it a little bit more difficult to do those large brush strokes because it doesn't retain as much water as the Windsor & Newton did. So according to dickblick.com, synthetics are man-made of either nylon or polyester. They can be tapered, tipped, flagged, abraded, or etched to increase color carrying ability. Often synthetic filaments are dyed and baked to make them softer and more absorbent. The more common name for this filament is Taclon. Advantages of the synthetic brush are, they are less prone to damage from solvents, insects, or paints. They are easier to keep clean than animal hair brushes because the filaments don't have animal scale structures to trap the paint. They are less prone to breakage and are durable on many different surfaces. And also, they are better suited for painting with acrylics because a synthetic filament will withstand the caustic nature of the acrylic paints with less damage.
comparison, you can see the difference on some of the florals and the leaves that I've done with both brushes. Both are a little similar, some might have a little bit more detail than the others, but it all comes down to maybe your price point and preference of if you want a longer lasting brush than the other. The Windsor & Newton Series 7 might last you a longer time, but it also might cost you quite a bit more. So it all comes down to your preference of maybe your price point or how long you actually might want to use this brush. For a beginner, I would suggest buying the Princeton Heritage Series brush over the Windsor & Newton. But if you've been doing this quite a while and you're a bit more of a professional, then maybe the Windsor & Newton Series 7. Like I said before, these are two brushes that I really love to use and you can find different characteristics and abilities of both brush that you might find that bring out different looks and styles of your art. I don't necessarily have a preference of both, but it's good to know what the difference is between a sable and a synthetic sable brush is. So I hope this video taught you a little bit more about the difference between what might be a natural brush and a fake brush, or as they like to call it, synthetic sable. But whatever brush or preference that you have, I just hope that you're grabbing any sort of brush out there and doing some art. Whether it's today or tomorrow, just go out there and create something beautiful. Because in the end, it's not about the materials you used, but about what you brought into this world. Thank you for watching, and if you want more updates, please subscribe and like this video now.